Hey everyone, my name is Leo and welcome to my channel. I'm a Cambridge University student who makes videos on university and productivity and today I'd like to take a step back from Cambridge videos and focus on a broader topic, that being getting research experience as a student. Specifically, I'll be using my time spent at Imperial College London earlier this year as an example of how I secured an internship despite not even being a student at the university. But the principles in this video should be applicable to most universities here in the UK. Timestamps for each part of the video are on the screen now if you'd like to skip to any particular part. Otherwise, without further ado, let's hop into it. So if you have any interest in doing research, you may have seen the term Europe floating around university web pages. Europe stands for Undergraduate Research Opportunities Programme, and as the name suggests, is a programme run by various universities whereby students have the opportunity to experience real-world research as part of one of the professor's labs, typically for a few months over some holidays. This concept is pretty widespread amongst universities, though some may have an alternative name for the programme, with others not necessarily offering a formal research programme at all. Yet, you'd be surprised at how many unadvertised opportunities are out there for students who are proactive and take the initiative, even for students who aren't actually enrolled at the university in question. Imperial College's Europe programme is perhaps one of the best known, and even with its more established framework and greater focus on research opportunities than most other universities, there is in most cases no formal online application process requiring prospective students to take a more old-fashioned approach in securing their placements, which will be outlined in this video. Before jumping into your application, it's important to spend a bit of time deciding exactly what kind of research you'd like to do, the earlier being the better. It may seem like you don't have the luxury of being picky as an undergraduate, but it's still worth considering the area which interests you the most since it will make a much easier and fun placement if it's in something you actually enjoy. Plus, potential supervisors will be impressed the more specific you can be about your research interests, so don't be afraid to be ambitious. The first thing you want to do is decide on which department you want to conduct your research in. This will more often than not be whichever department you're studying in, but it doesn't necessarily have to be, as long as you can demonstrate that you have the necessary background knowledge and motivation to succeed in your chosen department. Most departments are further broken down into subcategories depending on what kind of research is being conducted at the university, so this is where having more specific interests will help narrow down your selection. If you're still not too sure, have a think about which modules or lectures you've particularly enjoyed during your course, as well as what kind of skills you'd like to develop further through a research internship. Once you decide your research theme, most university web pages will then give a list of all principal investigators working in that particular field all of which will have even more specialised interests under their profiles, with some more interdisciplinary labs potentially appearing under multiple different themes. At this point, it's worth considering whether there, any of the professors you're interested in working with have already advertised opportunities they'd like to recruit for. Even if they haven't though, this doesn't mean that they wouldn't be open to accepting talented students, so be sure to include them in your shortlist. So after doing careful research and creating a shortlist of potential supervisors you want to work with, the next stage is of course to contact them. If it's not someone you know in person, then it's likely you have to send them an email. As for how many supervisors you should contact, there is unfortunately no magic number, but I would advise to only contact one at a time so you're not juggling several applications at once if they all happen to reply at the same time. Instead, I would arrange your list in order of preference and work your way down, giving each about one week to reply before moving on to the next. Don't be disheartened if they don't reply. Academic professors are very busy and may just not have the resources or time to take on any students. The key is to persevere, as well as making sure your email is well crafted and to the point. Speaking of which, you want to make sure you're using your university email address since academic institutions often filter out personal emails before they even reach the recipient's inbox. In terms of what to include in the email, there really is no one-size-fits-all approach, but I would say to keep it succinct and be clear about what it is you're looking for. Give a brief background on yourself and what kind of research you're looking for, but most importantly, request for a follow-up call uh, where you can discuss further details. As I said, professors are very busy and will appreciate a short and easy to read email. You could also include your CV in your email, but if I'm being honest, it's unlikely they'll read it unless they've specifically requested it, so don't make it your priority. If all goes well and one of your potential supervisors replies requesting to meet, then well done, you've gotten past one of the most difficult parts already. This meeting will usually be an informal chat to get to know your specific research interests, motivations, and what kind of skills you can bring to the lab, though depending on the competition of the lab, it may be structured more formally and academically, especially if a project has been advertised, so make sure to prepare accordingly. As with any interview preparation, I would recommend creating a document with potential questions that could come up based on the lab and field you're applying to, and then creating and practicing model answers to help get you comfortable with the format. For interviews of a more academic nature, I would also advise looking into your supervisor's most recent publications to get a better understanding of the exact things they're working on at the moment and the current state of the art in your field of interests. My interview wasn't too technical and consisted more of motivation-style questions. 
specifically asking about my academic background, what kind of skills I'd like to get out of doing a placement, as well as my specific academic interests and whether there was a particular direction I wanted to steer my potential project. Overall, I would try to stay relaxed and just answer the questions thoroughly but honestly and let your passion for the subject shine through in your answers. If the interview is successful and your supervisor does decide to take you on, then congrats! This may happen several months in advance of your proposed start date, so make sure you coordinate the project practicalities and logistics with your supervisor, and use this time to ask any questions you may have prior to starting. You may very well get sent some pre-reading or preparation material to look over, especially if you're relatively new to the project field, but even if you don't receive anything, you should still take the initiative and prepare as much as you feel you need to make the most of your project. Since research projects can be so varied in nature, it's difficult for me to give specific advice on how to succeed, but there are some general things to keep in mind for all projects. Firstly, be sure to arrange regular checkup meetings with your supervisor, especially if your project is remote and you're not interacting with the lab that much in your day-to-day -day activities. This is really important for making sure that you keep up to date with your work and have concrete aims to work on each week. Also, do take the opportunity to speak to other lab members and get friendly with them, especially those who may be helping you with certain aspects of the project. You'll find that people are usually more than happy to share their work with keen students and it'll be useful for networking and retaining future connections. As I said near the beginning of the video, your project is probably going to last anywhere from several weeks to a few months and even after it's finished, there's still a couple of things to consider if you want to make the most of your experience. Firstly, be sure to thank your supervisor and any others for sharing their time and wisdom with you. Not only is this a nice gesture, but it ensures that you end things in good standing and can even get a reference from them if needed in the future. You may decide that you liked working on your project so much that you'd like to continue working in that lab as a PhD student in the future, in which case you should definitely discuss this with your supervisor towards the end and details regarding applications for that. Even if you don't want to work with them anymore, take some time to reflect on your experience and the skills you've learnt, not just the technical skills for your CV, but also the soft skills along the way, bearing in mind that the process of research and approaching potential supervisors in the first instance is usually the main starting point for PhD applications, or even just general speculative job applications, and that these skills will be invaluable to you, whatever you may choose to pursue in the future. So that's all from me, I hope you found this guide to student research placements useful. If you'd like to see more content like this, then please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Bye for now.